Today we're going to conquer one of the more difficult but powerful features of ZBrush 3.5, depth. But depth can be confusing if we don't understand the fundamental context. If Z intensity and brush pressure are what used to equal the depth of stroke, or how far you carved into the model, what does the new depth feature do? Experimenting can bring some questions and some problems. Why does it sometimes soften my brush stroke? Why does nothing happen sometimes? What the heck are we looking at? Where is this dial going inside of the interface? But don't give up. Depth is really just uber depth. Depth takes all the effects of your brush, brush type, stroke, alpha, samples, Z sub, intensity, and it either digs those into your model or it lifts them up above the surface of your model. So now what is depth mask? Now you remember the squash and stretch ball from those animation tests? Depth mask is the squash and stretch of uber depth or really just the squash right now. So why would we ever use uber depth? Well let's take a look in ZBrush and learn all about it. The depth features can be found in the brush palette, in the depth sub palette. And the best brush to really learn about the planar uh, or the depth system is really the planar brush. So we can go in, select just planar. Notice that the main feature, embed, is set to zero. So when I click on the surface of the model, not much happens. I can click multiple times and it will slowly start to cut more and more. But if you remember from samples, the sample radius is set to 0.2, which means that it's sampling 20% of this area, of the area within the red circle of my brush. And so as I brush, as I go over an area, let's just turn symmetry off, it's going to sample 20% of that and 20% of that is going to be slightly down, slightly at the bottom. So that's going to allow me to cut in. Now without adjusting the depth embed at all, let me make this a little bit more clear. Let's take our sample radius and take it all the way up to 2. Now it's going to sample twice the pixels. So it's 100% the size of my brush and as I press uh, down on the surface it's going to carve a lot more. It's going to carve all the way in to the model and that is because we're sampling an area that's much larger and essentially including some polygons that are that have depth to them. This could be seen especially here in the eye area where some polygons are going to be deep and some are going to be high. So now I'm going to click in that area and I am able to cut a large swath. Now let's set our sample radius to zero and watch as this does nearly nothing. But one of the key features about the planar brush is that it is creating a 2D virtual plane based on wherever I'm clicking that's going to extend all the way through the model and in this case it's going to allow me to lop off the nose. However, it's not going to dig deep unless I'm either sampling more of an area or I have set my embed higher. Now I'm cutting deeper into the model. And you'll see exactly what's happening here in this thumbnail viewer. As we increase it in the positive direction, it's digging deeper and deeper into the model. This white circle represents everything that our brush is doing. It uh, represents the entire sphere of activity for our brush. 
Now, if I set it in the negative direction, watch as almost nothing happens because the effects of the planar brush are lifted above the surface, which in the case of the planar brush doesn't really give us much behavior at all. And this is one of the reasons why it can be confusing. One thing to tackle right off the bat is that the positive or negative behavior also depends on if you have Z add or Z sub. If I turn Z add on, notice that a positive embed value takes that above the surface, whereas a negative embed value takes it below. So be mindful of that. Some brushes are going to have uh, different features uh, enable different settings. Now we can go into the planar brush and say go to planar cut and you'll see that that has an embed of 10 and it is designed to simply cut into the surface of your model. So now we can restore this to all of its glory and then just carve back into it. So now I'm just cutting away and there are two things going on here that can be confusing. One is that ZBrush is deciding the orientation of the 2D plane, which you can really see by watching my brush move along the surface. Now that 2D plane is facing down. Now that 2D plane is facing, you know, mostly to the side, facing down, facing up, on from there. Now the orientation of that 2D plane is decided by where your brush is clicking as well as your sample radius. So increasing your sample radius will average out the direction of that plane. But this plane can be difficult to control. The primary difficulty people have with planar brush is that that cutting plane is hard to control. And so a quick tip about that is to establish the cutting plane with trim dynamic. Establish it in a freehand way. And then once you have it established, then you can go in with planar and be very specific about it. and get the hard edge that you want. This is used to great effect with mechanical objects in areas where we need to keep the form very constrained. So we've got planar on, we've got embed set to zero, let's make sure we have the right subtool selected and our 2D plane is established and we're cutting from there. Now if we increase the embed let's say to 10 which is essentially the planar cut we can press alt and start to cut and establish uh, different planes that will work for our form. But again in this case the uh, plane itself is sometimes hard to define. Now let's take a look at another feature within the depth which is depth mask. And depth mask can be really highlighted with the planar cut thin brush. So what planar cut thin is doing is taking a cross section of your model which you can actually bury into your model. Let's turn MRGB off. And you can see I'm clicking up here, but because I have embed on, the effect of the brush has been lowered from this point down to this point. And I'm also not affecting anything above that. So the effects of the brush are really limited to this area right here. So let's try that again. Let's lower the embed to let's say 10. And you can see that we are bringing that effect upwards. 
set it to 5, same area, and now bringing the effect upwards and really localizing where it's, uh, where it's taking effect. Now this is also used with brushes like say a uh, polish brush which is designed to kind of limit the exposure of the surface underneath and maximize just polishing and pulling areas uh, down. If we look at a, another model, we can see the effect of this a little bit better. But we can take on this mechanical surface, we can take the polish brush and really work it to get these hard edges that we might want here. I'm going to lower my draw size. And everything is combining the samples, the depth, and the depth mask to give the hard polish brush the behavior that it has. Now if we switch over to the medium polish brush, notice that its area of effect is much larger, its samples are larger, its preserve edge is essentially gone, and then as we go over the surface, as we approach the, the edge itself, it starts to affect the edge, it starts to tear into the area and, and simply destroy the back side. Uh, which is completely opposite to what we want uh, the planar hard polish to do. Not the planar, but just the hard polish. See how it's preserving that edge and, and leaving the opposite side alone as much as is possible. Now that's a very subtle effect, but that's the primary uh, purpose of depth mask is just to, just to squash the area of effect down and sometimes only affect a cross section. A really interesting use of the depth feature is the skin brush. So if we go to the brush palette and go all the way to skin one, you'll see the alpha is here and this is a pretty basic alpha, pretty much alpha 57 and let's just remove the depth feature just to see what this does by itself. So now, brushing on the surface of the model, you can see it adds and just inflates the area. Really has destroyed the surface area, but that's a really, really nice skin texture. If I could just get this brush to not inflate the area and just lightly texture the model, then I would have an awesome brush. And that is exactly what uh, embed is going to do for us. So if we set that embed back down to negative 78, notice how only a tip of it is intersecting our surface. Now we can run this along the surface. And I'm having to press really hard and it is inflating the air, the surface a bit, but not nearly as badly as it was before. And the cost benefit is pretty awesome. If I have to move some of the surface in slightly to account for this really great granular skin texture, then uh, you know, so be it. Now, that said. The easiest way to use this brush was not the way I started using it, but it's important for me to leave it in how, how I did that so I, I can share with you the learning process. But I just started clicking on the surface and then clicking harder. So classic male behavior, if it doesn't work, uh, talk louder, uh, hit it harder, um, just don't rethink, whatever you do. Now, that said, I accidentally reminded myself that the key to using this brush is not to push harder. The key to using this brush is to go in circles. Take your brush stroke around in circles and you will not have to click hard and you will get the texturing that you need. So really awesome skin texture. And this has been done 
by limiting the uh, inflating effect of the brush really just by dropping that deep into the model. So there are a lot of uses for depth. Some of them are not going to be straightforward, uh, but there'll be a lot more discovered as we go. And I hope you've learned something and enjoyed. Thanks.